Okay, I'm going to take you through a basis period example where um, the t uh, accounting period that ends in the second tax year is exactly 12 months long. So the question at the top says, um, if you started trading on the 1st of June 2011, what I would do, since you see that date, make a note of the um, tax year the person started trading in. So June 11 would be the 11-12 um, tax year. So write it down in the exam somewhere. Then, if you look underneath, you'll see tax year 1. Put it in straight away. As soon as you know it's the first tax year, you've identified it, put it in the table that they'll give you. What I'd also do is look at these periods and see what um, year they end in. So December 11 ends in 11-12, December 12 ends in 12-13, and December 13 ends in 13-14. Okay, once you've done the, identified the first tax year, then just go in and put the remaining two tax years in. They're probably only going to ask you for three. When we do that, we're going to work out what the uh, basis periods are. So we know in the first year, we always go from the start of trade, so 1st of June, and we always go to the next tax year end, which is the 5th of April. Let's just do the dates, and we'll do the profits in a second. Tax year 2, remember the question you ask yourself is, is there an accounting period or period of account that ends in the second tax year? We've identified the second tax year as being 12-13. Have a look at the top. This one does, so the answer is yes. And then you ask yourself a further question is how long is the period? And then you see it's 12 months. So remember the rules for 12 months is you just tax the 12 months. So from the 1st of Jan, 12 to the 31st of December, 12. By year three, normal rules, just tax the account period that ends in 12 13. Look at the top, we identified it was the year to December tw uh, 13. Let's do the numbers now. So let's go up. What I would do up here is we're going to tax from the 1st of June to the 5th of April. Now make a note, have a look at this, at this period. This period um, goes up to December 2011 and that's just six months. But we need to tax more than that. We need to actually go into the second year and take some of the profits from that year to tax in the first tax year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down that period into two. I'm going to tax the profits from the 1st of June to the uh, 31st December 11, those six months, that can go straight in. What I also have to do is tax from the day after, the 1st of Jan, 12, to the end of the tax year, the 5th of April, 12. So that's three months. We're going to take three months from this period of 12 months, and that should give you uh, three tiles of 45,000, and you get 11250. Don't forget to add it together because that's the total for the tax year number one. Tax year two is easy. We've identified it's the second uh, year, so the year to December 12, put it in, and the third year would be the year to December 13, put it in. Last thing you're always asked to do is identify the overlap profits. Um, you can see I've put three months there. I know it's, it's th I know it's three months because you count the number of months from the end of the accounting period to the end of the tax year. Starting with January, February, March, that's three months. So you're looking to identify a three month overlap period. Now if you did your workings, I can see it already, it's there. And I know it's that, but let's just show you how I worked it out. So basically you go to the second tax year and you look back to the first tax year. This start date is already included there. And we went with tax, therefore, from that period to that period, because that's included in here as well. So write down the date. It would be from the 1st of Jan to the 5th of April, three twelves, and it's the same as that. So it's really important that if you write down your workings, you can really clearly see where your overlap has actually come from. That's it. Done.